and the final control. We'll be having the other guys coming back from leave today or tomorrow, I think. We'll be back to full complement. Still drinking my tea. We are maybe a minute or so late because one or two hiccups. And the kettle wouldn't boil. Baker. My water's not here. have water. Oh yeah, I have to switch off electronic devices for it for take off and landing. Might interfere with the flight controls. So, what are we going to do today? We're going to do what we do every day, plan to take over the world. No, we're not going to do that. I don't know why anybody would want to take over the world. Such a responsibility. Our plan was to head down to the river see if there are any tracks between here and there. And then we're going north and east and west. Mostly northwest. We're gonna go and find he who calls and doesn't get answers. Cold air has been hiding down here at the river. It's a quite a mild morning waking up this morning, but it's pretty chilly down here on the river. Another lag cruiser must have been stuck there. Yeah. So there, that's why that crossing looks like it does. Must have been another lag cruiser they got stuck. <coughs> yeah, we're gonna go to our beta pan quickly and have a look if there are any tracks or anything there. Actually. Under the leaf, push will drive. I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to make my way onto the fence line. 
buses are just like being on a fence line, just for a few meters on the fence line, just so that we can have a look at tracks and see if that other male line, not the one we've been watching, the other old boy has been up and down, as well as leopards. Could you do it? 
Dacre as well, two two on bow. They're not that big as a mammal. But Dacre are also known to chew on other things. In fact, I've heard reports of Dacre even eating on flesh. Common Dacre, small antelope, rather unusual. Now, excuse me, we're now heading up the eastern boundary of Thorny Bush just for a short distance because there's another male lion that yesterday I was supposedly patrolling up and down this boundary and he didn't come down this far. Hyena tracks. I'm just going to take it up. Take the road up to Feed Buffalo and Hyena here. To the next junction and then turn back in. <coughs> hitting the tops of the trees now. We're soon going to have some lovely light. Another clear, clear day. And uh, looks promising. Okay. Let's see who's sending in emails. James. Morning, James. Asking why water holes called Pan. Um, good question. Although, not all water holes can be called Pan. Pan are generally naturally formed little mud wallows and <coughs> naturally formed little things. They could be called a water hole, but I think a water hole more is like a man-made thing that is that has got wood kept has water pumped to it, uh, as opposed to the formation of a natural pad through the action of animals like warthogs and elephants and buffalo and other bigger, bigger non-hairy mammals having mud bars and pans tend to form, to start with just the footprint of a, an elephant in the mud and then the next time it rains, that fills up with water and becomes big enough for a warthog to wallow in. And after a few seasons of warthogs wallowing, it becomes big enough for buffalo to wallow in. And then it becomes big enough for elephants. And so over the years, they just get bigger and bigger. I'll try and point out when we if and when we pass some pans. Um, Dams are also perhaps more man-made than pans because dams have been built perhaps across a drainage line, perhaps uh, a gully where it is and a dam with a wall pushed up across it by a bulldozer or something. And I guess like a beaver dam, except you don't use wood, you use soil. Right. Beavers create a dam. Humans also create dams, some of this is the way beavers do it. Except, I mean, in principle, of course, just blocking the surface flow of excess rainwater and holding that water back. Have I figured out the skull yet? No, actually I haven't. It's still puzzled by it. Uh, still puzzled. As an adult male skull of an antelope. Might have even 
died of old age. camera when will it be fixed? Bumped it with my elbow. That's the new house going. I didn't bump it with my elbow. Um the one of the rear plugs on the the rear USB fittings on the on the one camera got damaged when the antenna broke. Well it didn't break. The antenna has to be able to come loose sometimes when we're going under trees and things. And it swung back and it knocked it, and it knocked where it knocked a little point where the mini USB plugs into the, the back of the camera, and so it wasn't working, and so it had to go for repairs. And we're hoping it'll come back soon. Very soon. That's beautiful. I knew we could get to see that the sun from the mountains. The sun is. hasn't reached here yet because we're on the western sort of slope of a, of, of a, of a little ridge. But it's shining on the treetops and the mountains in the distance. Very pretty. Okay, Suzanne in the Netherlands wanting to know what's happened to part we're waiting for. I am not too sure. Yeah, maybe the referring to the laptop that we only got yesterday that we now got it set up. Or is it set up already? Okay, Pete's working on it. Uh, so in the next day or so it should be up and running with a better screen I hope. Coming soon, to Dan. Watch the space. And uh, that one I'll have to reply on email. Can't do that one, thanks. Hello, Ariel. Oh. One of the best roads in Africa. <coughs> use low range, a flat road. <coughs> okay, so where are the cats today? That's the worst of it. 
it over with. Who's been walking here? Zebra. was working, I'd say maybe anywhere between 10 and 15 kilometers an hour. I'm driving at a walking pace most of the time. I'm driving, if you know, a manual gearbox. I don't ever... Okay, sorry, just before we go on. This, James, on the left, this is a pan. Drying up now, there's still a little bit of mud there. But... That next season is going to be probably it's going to hold a lot more water than it did this season because so much mud has been taken away by bigger mammals. Um, to the radio. Sometimes I look like a Formula One driver. A bit of an exaggeration, I'd say. But yes, I'm very, I hardly ever get into third gear. Uh, and the revs never get really that high. Sometimes even second gear with the engine racing a little bit. Sometimes in second gear I have to put my foot on the brake because it's, I've got to slow the jigger down. And then the other part of the question was animals. Have I noticed a decline in numbers over the last 20 years? Well, I can't really talk about Thornybush. This is the first time I've ever been in Thornybush. So I wouldn't be able to answer that question in relation to Thornybush, but certainly in terms of home, back home. Uh, yes, in some ways, and no in others. Uh, decline in wildebeest numbers, but there's been, an, obviously, I'm getting more elephant around, and then and lion, and so it's varies species to species, but there's definitely been a, a decline in say wildebeest numbers in general. Uh, no reflection on anywhere in particular, but in general, lion or on the decline. Uh, only elephant populations really have been growing, and then of course there are a few other species. Giraffe are always there's always been giraffe and impala, and they much stayed the same, those numbers. have a different call for different things such as when they make a kill and can we tell the difference of the call um, yeah they do have 
they do have different calls, but they, they don't necessarily call when they make a kill. Um, when they make a kill, they're just feeding. So they don't really much calling when they make a kill. But generally there's territorial calling and there are the calls for locating pride members. Yeah, how warm is this air? I think it's get a gap to see the mountains through these trees. Really, really pretty. Beautiful. Um, as far as telling the difference, no, not really. I have to be honest. Um, Wait, wait, radio, there's a lot going on and I need to Thank you. 
They lift the track. <coughs> Mostly because the males are bigger and heavier than the females and their feet are twice the size. So it's mostly just the size. It can be difficult to get a young male leopard. To tell the difference between a young male and a big female sometimes it can be difficult. Uh, but as far as adults are concerned, males are bigger than females. the track size. There's a considerable size difference in the track. side of the river, that particular property, that landowner's prerogative to do what he wants, and they're trimming the trees back quite a distance from the road, um, probably to act as fire breaks. It depends on who owns the property, you see. Tawny Bush is made up of different privately owned properties. It's not one landowner that owns Tawny Bush, and each landowner has their own way of doing things. What I did hear was that it was controlled burn in the Kruger National Park. Hello, little Mrs. Miala. Oh, there's your baby. That's the first animal. On the which is hiding behind the tree. You get that one through there. Oh, I suppose not because the light shining on the branch. Standing, it's a young male standing in the shadows. Oh, that's probably no good, is it? Big? When that thing moves, it gives us a chance to stop and listen. Maybe get some elephant feeding. Nyala's with his horns starting to grow at the top of his head.
Brian. Not at work today, Saturday. Hello, Mrs. Nyala. Glad you've come this way, but it doesn't help me much. There's the little boy. Maybe if we turn in here a little bit, we'll see her. Brian's asking a question about the animals here at Thornybush being self-contained. Are the prey species self-sustaining or are animals brought in? I don't know the answer to that, Brian. I don't know about the management policies of Thornybush. And I know that they have been buying animals in the past. They have been bringing animals in uh, either to, to, to boost numbers, where they've gone now, either to boost numbers or to bring in species that aren't here that they wanted to have. I know they brought in Elon at some point some years ago. Um, other than that, I really don't know. I'm really not commenting much on the management of thorny bush. It's not my place to comment on it. Um, I'm here for a short period of time. I'm more involved, more interested in the animals we're going to be viewing and their lives uh, and I have to be honest with you I'm not really that much interested in how Thorny Bush managed this reserve I know that sounds a little callous or not really that doesn't really sound like me but to be honest it's a, a different kettle of fish entirely with a self-contained reserve and the management thereof um, and I, I but I don't feel it's my place to be commenting on, on how Thorny Bush operates. Uh, what was the other question that Brian was asking? Oh. What was the second question? Oh, malaria. Do we get the malaria here? What precautions do we take? Yes, it is a malaria area. We are in the low felt part of well, on the edge of Kruger. Uh, precautions, we don't, I don't take any. I can't take any. Generally, people who live here, well, no, I do take precautions. I, I'm, I'm not answering it properly. Uh, Becky would have to answer for herself. Everybody would have to answer for themselves on that particular question because uh, different people do different things. But in terms of taking oral con uh, um, contraceptives, different to me, prophylactic. Hello, Mr. Bignola. That's why the females come in this way. The Nyala are not playing ball this morning. They're all hiding in bushes. That makes, makes weird angle. The precautions I take are that in summer, in the summer months, I uh, sometimes use insect repellent. Um, and the mosquito net, of course. But one cannot live in an area and take malaria tablets, anti-malaria tablets, prophylactics, prophylaxis, for extended periods of time. There is reasons for that. Some may be true, some may be uh, urban legend type stories. But it is believed that by taking the tablets on a permanent basis, you're not only damaging liver and um, becoming susceptible to certain cancers and things, because you can't take the tablets for extended periods of time, but also that it's not 100% effective and that if you do get malaria, it becomes very hard to diagnose. Uh, and that, well, treatment of malaria is the very thing that you take prophylaxis for. So if you're on the tablets, then the tablets are not going to be that effective in treating it if you do get it while you've been on the tablets, that kind of thing. Um, not that people have a resistance to it. There's no such real thing as, as being immune to it. 
maybe resistance is a better word actually that living in a malaria era not exactly resistant but it's just that the body becomes less affected by it by being exposed to it so that when you get malaria you're not as debilitated as someone who's never lived in the area before I don't know. the other saving grace of course is the fact that we live away from human habitation I mean from for me personally, all the years that I've lived in really remote places in Africa that are very bad malaria areas, living in a little camp in the middle of the bush is actually quite safe because there's no malaria in away from away from cities and towns and, and human settlements. And the places at risk are going into towns and villages. Living in a camp in the middle of a game reserve with a permanent staff of anywhere from 10 to 20 people, if there was malaria in that area, one of us would then come down with malaria, or if not one, at least a number of people that's in the camp would come with, down with malaria. And conversely, if one of the guys could go on leave and come back with malaria and there were mosquitoes that could transmit it, it would be quickly spread throughout the community in the camp and that doesn't happen because the guys would go and leave they'd get malaria in their villages and then they'd come back to work and the fact that it doesn't spread would mean that there are no mosquitoes in that area of course being a visitor to South Africa when you come to the bush it is advisable to take prophylaxis uh, imperative in fact because you're going through airports you're going through much larger populated areas. devices. Vivian in Chicago, what depends scenarios can we expect out of this young male lion in terms of what he's going to do? Uh, get hungry and hunt, call and wait, go and look for the pride. Only answer I can give is wait and see. We're going to go find him and follow him. We're going to make our way there now. I'm going to find out shortly what's happening with his uh, status. But we're going to make our way that way, and we will see shortly. Um, but yes, any of the above. I, uh, I started thinking last night that uh, the, other op the other option or the other possibility that we have is he is of that age now where he needs to become somewhat nomadic and he needs to go out and establish his own pride, he needs to go and establish his own territory. So who knows, this could be the, what is happening right now. It could be that what we are witnessing is the, the independence of a young male lion finally leaving the pride. possible. Oh, 
went a little bit. be able to follow this young male for the next couple of days, well, follow his progress, if not physically by, by, by being with him, at least with, uh, with listening to the radio and seeing, hearing what happens with him from, from the other guys, and uh, it's, it's something that, well, you just have to tune in and, and view, because we could come up with all sorts of possibilities of what you might be doing, but none of it is really going to be what it happens in reality, and the reality of it is, that's why we're here. We want to see what's going to transpire. That's the beauty of being in the live drive, is that every day, you wake up, follow the saga of the young male lion, he who calls and doesn't get answered. activity because it's all part of the same stretch of bush. But what is different of course is the fact is, is that over time there have been fences in the, in both at Juma and here and, and of course the management of the, the environment, the ecosystem has been different and so the management of species has been different.
Reza uh, was asking, uh, is it true that when one warthog in the group defecates, they all do the same thing? I, I don't know. It's sure. Yes and no. Sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, look, sometimes you get animals in a herd, in a group, that engage in the same type of behavior. Um, you will notice with impala as well. When one is grooming, suddenly they'll all be grooming. Or when one one starts going to the toilet, some of the others follow suit. But it's maybe only because the digestive systems are the same and if things are all working the same in different individuals, then when it's time for one, it's time for others. But that's a bit of a... I don't know, that's kind of a strange question. But I'll certainly keep my eyes open next time I'm watching also. it out of the vehicle and I've been kind of, I was kind of preoccupied last night with other things. Um, it's been also making dinner and having dinner and stuff. didn't want to be playing with a skull at the same time. It still has a little bit of dried skin on it. Um, and night time is not the best time to be doing that because I need light, proper light. Well, I guess no. answer is no and I'll get to it later today. when you're doing one small task how much time it can eat and I've been trying to go through my settings on my computer to figure out why it is it's picking up the router it's picking up um, the, the, the Wi-Fi connection but it's not giving me internet access for some reason and I, even when I put it onto a what they call ethernet cable it's still not getting internet so I don't know there's something settings that have changed or something and it's I can sit there and go through settings and suddenly a couple of hours have gone by and still no internet and I'd love to just get it because I want to post photographs I would love to post a little bit of video yesterday from my lion from my little camera apart from the fact that I've got to do some banking now already what's this the 8th or 7th Seven today, eight, whatever. It's a week into June, and I was supposed to do banking a week ago, paying accounts. And things. Start getting lawyers in. Got to get my internet up and running. And I'm not using a public computer to go into my banking. I refuse. I get up to Facebook on the computer in FC because I need to get into my emails and check things, but it's not ideal. I'm not really supposed to be using that computer for my personal email stuff and checking my Facebook. But uh, I have been in it. Got to get feet on the line and get some help to sort out my computer and all the settings. Funny, it was working one day and the next day it wasn't in a while. <laughs> this station was at Madonna Gala. Wait a Sorry, repeat that please. after a month at Westville. Okay, John, uh, do you have any other vehicles there or line up? Okay, copy. Oh, 
I'll contact you in a bit and wait till you go. Um, but yes, I did go to Alpita Pan and checked on the fence line and then did a little bit of uh, Nialetti. Nothing really that fast. Reminder, if you're sending in questions, it's nice to know where you live, where you're sending your questions from. Um, so when you sign your name, just sort of say, Katie from New Jersey, for example. wildearth.tv is the address. Okay, so I've been chatting to the guys that are with our young male lion at Waxful Pan, and they're saying at the moment only one vehicle can really see him at a time because of the way he's lying and where he's lying, that it's not easy for two vehicles to view him. So there is one vehicle there, and there's another vehicle waiting to see him. So there's no real rush to get there, because otherwise we just got to get there and sit and wait. So we're going to look around for other tracks. Oh, by the way. Sometimes I lose my sense of humour with these roads.
of the Wild African School Book. Place cooler on the ground, a big square patch. Track one. An African cooler box. Marsha. And he says, give me some advice for the computer. Thank you. I'll get that when I get back to camp. And how old is this young male lion? I think he's about four. I'd say it's probably four.
that the end of the question? I'm kind of lost you in the middle there. to keep up with the trees that the elephants destroy. The trees don't... Well, elephants don't really destroy trees, Jules. The environment keeps up with the elephants on its own. But to answer the question... Wait, no, Andy. Um... You can't plant trees here, really. Um, they'd be eaten so quickly. But it's it's like taking ice to Eskimos, really. I mean, if we just look at this, we're at, at a particular spot with a view, a view looking out over the bush felt ahead of us and then west towards the mountains. There have been elephants here for decades, forever, and you can't really tell that elephants have been eating and breaking trees because it just opens it up for more trees to grow and the very active animals being here and eating trees and eating the seeds and the pods and the fruits and recycling the trees there's constant regrowth happening so it wouldn't be possible to grow trees to put plant trees really so it's, just a, it's a natural environment it's the way it has always been there's no need to plant trees Ellen, another question about the young male lion. I think, I think a little, I suppose in a way he, got, he does look sad, but I don't know, we can't really put our Yeah, that's right, it's long claws. Maybe they're going to be in the road. Healthy population of long claws here. Yep, they're in the road. Three of them. Uh, I'm gonna get to my okay, I'm looking into the light a little bit and uh, moving into the grass. It is perfect habitat for the other thread of long tall I don't think I've ever seen so many. Almost every drive. Um, Ellen, there's absolutely no way of knowing what's going to happen or what what is going to transpire with this young lion. Uh, it's one of those things with animal behaviour. You cannot predict it. You cannot. Only the lion knows, and there's no way of getting into his head. So I, I, I appreciate a lot of people are concerned. Maybe one doesn't have to be concerned. This has been going on with lions for millions of years. This is how lions live, and the beauty of the fact that we have a camera on the vehicle here in the bush allows us. Uh, we better get there soon because there's buffalo approaching that young man line. See what might, we might miss what happens there. I think he's going to be a bit too small and inexperienced to take a buffalo on his own. But you never know these things. I've seen lioness take buffalo on their own. Of course, there's a very big lioness. Um, animal behavior is something that only the animals knows what it's going to do. So there's no way of telling absolutely no way but because we have this vehicle and this camera it allows us to it allows us to come out here every day and follow the story and, and see what's going to happen 
but I, I, I wish I could answer the question as to what is he going to do or what's going to happen. It's, it is really a case of let's wait and see.
Dusky, I think. Dusky Flycatcher. Peggy wants to know if we have any crocodiles in the waters here. Yes, there are. There was a crocodile. The dam that we've just passed, Peggy, has a crocodile in it. Couldn't see her today. Sometimes she's on the bank, sometimes in the water. I would have thought that she'd be on the bank this morning. Yeah, Mark Edgar. Yeah. There, thanks. Yeah, I'm still on long one, so it'll be a couple of minutes, but thanks very much. without having seen it and not knowing what the circumstances were. So I guess in a way you could say it's unusual. Um, behavioural thing. Very hard to comment on things like that without observing it. But, yeah, I suppose in a way. Honey badger done. Lodges are the ones that provide the rifles, 
I'm just against weapons. I don't like guns. I don't even think I hate worse than guns or toy guns. Beyond me how humans, why do they even make toy guns? Ah, uh, as a kid I played with it. I, I can remember as a kid. My grandfather had the same sentiment and I couldn't have thought that he was being a little bit over the top. Well, but now, I don't know, I've been like this for many years now. When I see kids with toy guns, I break them. I don't break the kids, I mean I break the toy guns. Uh, I'm, just, I'm so against the old gun thing. So unnecessary. Um, but yes, in terms of guiding, and when I am guiding, especially... What I would like to get is pepper spray, more effective than rifle.
you're breaking up, I didn't copy that properly.
over this giraffe back lying in the shade. That's why we had to come around this side. I'm not going to see him because he looks straight into the sun right now, but unfortunately, I'm not going to move much because this young male lion watching these giraffe and the buffalo, he's in the shade, straight along the dam wall, in the back there, in the shade of that, yes, that very dark green quarry, just in front of that quarry bush. I don't think they've seen him yet. A young male and a young female giraffe. And I'm thinking maybe we need to go. Let's go around. Another buffalo coming in. We need to be able to look at this from a better angle with the camera. So that buffalo is now heading towards him. We don't want to see what happens because go here we we'll get to see him maybe. He's, yeah, he's running, he's moving away from this buffalo. He uh he's dropping down below the damn wall now. This buffalo has seen him as well. So I'm not gonna and another big buffalo bull coming out of the, the bottom of the dam wall. I was going to go back around, but now we need to see what's going to happen here. I think there's just too much here for this little boy, little boy lion. And number four buffalo coming. I've got four to get the rock and the buffalo. Steph was asking about thorny bush, whether it's part of the white lion range and how close it is to where they roam. Well, there are two, two different white parts to that 
theft, death. The Timbavati, which is the original home of the White Lions, where their genes still roam, and that is up in the northern part, not that's borders on Thorny Bush, or Thorny Bush borders on the Timbavati rather, uh, which is just north of Thorny Bush. But to the west of Thorny Bush are some private land, private properties, where there is a thing called the White, the White Lion Project. What is that little girl's giraffe doing? Um, where they are breeding white lions. A project that is run by a woman by the name of Linda Tucker. And it's the White Lion Project. What's she flirting with him? They're too young to be playing those games. I can try and angle the vehicle a little bit better. With this buffalo in the way, we can't get to the line. We have to go around, but I want to just, just wait and see what might pass by. Quite a young buffalo. This. Hello, little boy. And this other old buffalo, he's got the clouds of flies with him. Thanks, Buffalo. Now you brought the flies to us. I think the Buffalo can smell him. is quite frisky. Or is it the little boy? Uh, little girl. Morning, Suzanne, in the Netherlands. Suzanne wants to know if the marula tree that we mention from time to time is the tree that produces the fruit that the amarula drink is made from. Yes, it is, Suzanne. Marula fruit. I'll see if I can find one, because there are a couple of trees that, strangely enough, are, still pr are producing fruit at the moment. And in my entire life, I have never seen fruit on a marula tree in June. Normally, they're ripening in January. And it could well be that because of the good rains, the marulas went through double flowering. They flowered again after they fruited in January. And they now produce, some of them are producing fruit again. So I'm going to see if I can find one for the afternoon drive. Or even while we're driving back now, for that matter. And then also find your marula tree when we when we're driving again. There are a couple here, but the angle is wrong to see them from. Becky can't turn the cameras behind the vehicle. But we're gonna now head over the dam wall. We're gonna go see where this little boy has gone. These buffalo are not really going anywhere. 
be a nice view from the other side of the damn wall. Okay? go forward. Well, I suppose I could. I guess I could squeeze past. Don't make any fast movement. It's really close. Hello, little boy. Is this coming fast? Fine. He's not going to do anything. He just watch the buffalo. And Becky. <laughs> okay, that was a bit close. I believe have been eating a buffalo up in the north. So what I think we should do is we should share like this to get a nice view of everything, including him.
Well, there's only one thing to do, and that's to go back that side, and then we've got to look into the sun. There's nothing we can do about it. get a lock here to be able to view this, so I just want to get some footage. Confirm it is stable. Okay, well finally we managed to get a signal. It's a very awkward little spot that we're at because moving even a few inches we lose signal. And well, we've got those three boys, Buffalo, having a little bit of a meeting. Yeah, I'm hardly copying you out of five. Which means I can't get questions. Um, the giraffe is still wandering around in the background. It's really just a beautiful scene to, to just sit with. I could sit here all day. To raft in the background, buffalo at the water, and a lion watching them. What more could we want? An elephant. That's what we could have. Flies that are bugging him. Same flies that probably come on, come with the buffalo. They can be irritating. They're very, very small flies, and they get into the nostrils in the corner of the eye and the corner of the mouth, places where there's moisture. And they do have quite a sharp little proboscis, so they can hurt. Not hurt. It's like a little pin pin. Little lady giraffe coming to have a drink. Very vulnerable point of, or very vulnerable time for giraffe when they come to the water and bend down like that to drink. Uh, if you were a wise little boy, little boy lion, you'd sneak down below the dam wall, and go around and come up behind that giraffe and catch it. We don't want you to catch a giraffe, really, but it's just saying you know, that could happen.
morning, Moira. Moira is asking a couple of things. First off, Moira is saying, Ingwe is leopard, what is lion? Lion is Ngala in uh, N-G-A-L-A, um, Ngala in, uh, in Shangan. Bubezi in Zulu for a male lion, Ngonya for females in Zulu. But we just refer to them as Ngala. And as reference to guns, Moira is saying that they use like a flashbang type thing for polar bears and wondering if it would help or make matters worse when it comes to elephant and lion. But I think for I think the likes of it, very hard to say, Moira, very difficult to say because the dynamics would be different in using a flashbang and then you still might have to use a rifle. Um, it depends on the individuals to a large extent. I'm sorry to use the word, it depends again. Um, some circumstances it can make it worse, and some circumstances it can it, it can help. But the thing is that you know you're not really justified in do, in in becoming aggressive. Hang on, I've got to be on the radio. Sorry, Moira, I just had to get on the radio. What's happening on the radio? Sounds like they had a leopard up north, but they lost it in the drainage line. And it sounds like they can't sure about that lion fighting with the other lion, the rest of his crowd, the Black Dam Pride. Um, could be they were on a buffalo yesterday. I'll not verify that when I speak to one of the guys. Yes. Okay, I can turn the radio down again. I thought I heard a vehicle approaching, I guess I was wrong. Um, flashbangs, gosh. The problem with using them is if you do make matters worse and then you, you, you it'll be too late to then use the rifle. Uh, with regards to these animals, you're not justified in shooting, uh, like, uh, you're not justified in shooting when an animal is still 10 yards away, whereas you maybe would be able to justify using a flashbang or a just a, one of those thunder flashes. We used to call them thunder flashes in the army. Um, very hard to tell what they would do, Moira. I, I, it would have to be. We would have to see. Uh, what I mean is, we would have to be in the circumstances and use it to see whether it would be effective or not. Uh, so it's not something one could predict how the animals would behave with it. You know, when you're out there on foot and you are charged by an animal, you don't get time to fire off a warning shot. And uh, t technically speaking, a warning shot makes the same noise as as a thunder flash or, or one of those bangs that you're talking about. And the, the, there's just no such thing as a warning shot because the, you, you're only really justified in firing when that animal is almost on top of you. There's no firing before then because with a bolt action rifle there's no time to reload in the time that between firing a warning shot and then the time when that warning shot has only made the animal angrier 
and it's still coming at you, there's no time to reload and fire again. So uh, I hope I'm trying. I hope I'm sort of articulating myself well enough in that. We don't even the, the noise of a very high caliber rifle is probably the same noise as this bang you're talking about, and we just don't do that. We just don't fire a, a shot because you've got to save that shot for in case the animal doesn't stop, and then you've got to put it down. You've got to put it down with the first shot. Really, a difficult question to answer, Moira. because I simply don't know how it, would, how it would play itself out using one of those things. I would be more tempted to, to take a pepper spray and use a pepper spray, because uh, I believe that would turn an animal quicker than a noise or a bang. But at least it will buy you time. Ultimately, the idea is not to get yourself into circumstances where you do have to use a rifle or a bang or a pepper spray, but it's not something you can always do consciously because sometimes when you're walking, these things happen. Sometimes they're on you before you know it. Um, what I mean by on you, you they're, they're in your space. An animal is in your space before you know it, even though you're trying to avoid them. Sometimes you do have to cross through thick, bush, thick areas of bush and sometimes Especially elephant. Elephant can be so quiet. You can be walking along and the next minute suddenly you've got an elephant in your face. You didn't even know he was there. Okay, copy. I still want to sit here for some time. See what transpires. We're lucky that we have the opportunity to view him again. I sort of copied that. Flying over. Looks like it. Come and land. Come and land, Egret. I haven't seen one of you for a long time. He's coming into land. Like a big Boeing. Behind the tree. That's an interesting bird to have. Can you see him or not? Great white egret. Huge egret.
Now, with nothing much happening in the rest of our part of the reserve, I'm going to sit here until, well, for some time still. Circumstances can change very suddenly. If something else comes along, or if more buffalo arrive, it could also stay the same, but it's uh, interesting to just sit and watch. Is your view of those two lying down, is it blocked by these, this simple bush? Swallow drinking. Hello, Cassie. Well, first off, Cassie's question is, is he interested in these buffalo? Is he just watching them? He's only just watching them. There's nothing at the moment. He's not even watching them, actually. He's lay down, going to sleep. There's nothing he can do. As a lone lion against four buffalo, there's nothing he can do about it. He's lucky that they haven't, that the wind is, is in his favor because they're likely to chase him off. In fact, if they got hold of him, they'd kill him. So, from that point of view, um, he, all he can do is just watch. I think even the giraffe, although they're both young giraffe and they are moving off, he knows there's nothing he can really do about them. He's also perhaps a little inexperienced to be able to go after something so big on his own. In terms of how often do lions eat and how often do they have to hunt, or is he, because they had the wildebeest two days ago, when does he need to eat again? Actually, there's no, there's no answer to that question, because, and I'm going to try and use, answer this without using my usual word, but there is no pattern. It could be in the next hour, and it could be in the next week. There's absolutely no way of knowing when he's going to eat next, or when he will hunt next, or Predators are very much opportunists, and once they've eaten something and they're full, they tend to spend time sleeping to digest. But even so, when lions are full and an opportunity arises, they quite likely will hunt if the opportunity arises, if, if something presents itself. So, uh, so they can they can hunt twice in a day, but they could also hunt twice in a week. Uh, it could take a week before they before they hunt again. Um, there, there's so many factors that hang on. There's so many factors that influence that kind of a answer because there is. There's, hang on. Yeah, talking. Missed all of that. Um, the number of individuals in a pride, the, the relationship between males and females in the pride, the relationship between adults and youngsters in the pride, all determine or, or, or are influencing factors in how much each individual gets to eat when they do make a kill. The other factor to, to, to bring into the equation is whether it was a big animal they ate previous or whether it was a large animal that they fed on, whether they finished it. Hang on. Okay, I'm just going to have to switch that radio off. 
otherwise I interrupt myself to listen to it and then I lose my chain of thought. Train of thought or chain of thought? Um, so there's no, there isn't an answer to uh, a question like how often do lions eat or how often do they hunt. There isn't a, a regularity to it that you can put a routine because there, there's so many different factors in the equation that it, and it's such a random thing. So I hope that does answer the question somewhat, even though I can't answer it in its entirety. I couldn't tell you. It's, it's not as predictable as us humans. We know. I know that when I get back to camp, I'm going to eat, and then at lunchtime I'm going to need to eat again, and then dinner I'll need to eat again. Conventional three meals a day, or some people have five or six smaller meals. But out here. You could say that the herbivores, their meals and their eating habits are predictable, but the predators are not. You can't tell when a predator is going to eat next. Hello Beverly, Australia. Why do I think he's not calling today? Gosh. Another question that's difficult to answer. I haven't the faintest idea. Only he knows why he's not calling. Uh, it could be the fact that he was calling for two days and he didn't get an answer. He's given up. could be because the temperature is different today. It's warmer. There's no point in calling. The sound is not going to travel very far. He was calling last night, we heard him during the night, it's quite possible he'll call again this evening, but it's difficult to get inside his mind and, and, and to know exactly why it is he's not calling right now, other than the fact that it looks like he just wants to sleep. It's going to be a hot day today, we'll spend most of it in the shade, and I'm pretty sure we'll come back here this evening, we'll try and find some elephants, but I do want to keep track of him, I do want to keep up with the story of him and, and, and find some answers for not only myself but of course for all of you out there who are watching and, and the more we see him uh, the more the questions more questions are raised as to what is going to transpire what's going to happen whether he's going to go back to the pride or whether they will come back here or what is going to happen we don't know and that's why we want to come and see him as often as we can or we'll find him as often as we can, while his, especially while he's still in signal range. You mean apart from the aspect of We are quite close to the edge of the reserve and there is a camp just outside the reserve on the other side of the fence where there was dogs barking. Yeah. Did it sound like a, a growling? How did it go? Put your earphones on, put the mic up. I'm going to answer that question just yet because I just want to listen to something through with the...
Né? Full movement. Hello, Marsha. Louisville. Home of the Louisville Slugger. Actually, home of a lot of things, Louisville. Thanks for all your Louisville facts, Marsha. Quite interesting. Egret's coming closer. Marsha was asking if egrets <coughs> are ever poached for their feathers. Not that I know of, Marsha. So what's your hat? Which side? Um, that feather. Yeah. Um, oh, look at that kudu bull. <gasps> wow. He hasn't seen it yet either. Massive kudu bull on the other side of the dam, looking our way. And he's not coming to the water yet. Yes. Moving through the background. Gosh, he's big. Um, Marcia, the one animal that we have that is under threat because of not for the feathers, but for really unusual reasons is our vultures. Vultures are under threat at the moment because of some belief that well there's some people that believe that vultures have an insight into the future because they can wake up in the morning and fly straight to a kill or a carcass Once again, listening to the radio in the middle of me talking to you, Marsha. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Very patient egret, hoping to catch something. I'm going to stand on the rock. No, I'm not going to stand on the rock. I was hoping we'd get a nice reflection of it, but we're not. Not likely now, it's going to just have egrets back. But because it's believed that vultures have this insight into the future and that they can tell the future, there is a belief that if you have a vulture's head outside your door, or I don't even know how they do it, but they, they, they take the vulture's head and they either hang it outside the door or above their bed, that they will dream of the lotto numbers. As ridiculous as it sounds, hundreds and hundreds of vultures are being killed for this. It's difficult to it's difficult to change the beliefs of humans once they get something into their thick skulls. Buffalo flat on his side, like the lion. It's just really unusual. Lion sleeping, buffalo sleeping, kind of a, a truce, as it were. I don't think the buffalo know that he's here. There was one buffalo that knew, knew he was here. He started coming towards the lion, and he the lion got up and moved a little bit. I don't know where the kudu's gone. The kudu's gone into the back there where the giraffe are. There's a lovely big kudu bull.
Kathy in Mississippi will lion hunt for the thrill of the hunt not really uh, lion hunt for food Kathy they, they, the, the energy requirements to hunt are quite extreme and the only way to replenish that energy is by eating so hunting is purely a means to eat it's a, 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 I don't think one can put enjoyment under some of the emotions going through lions head at the time of a hunt um, I think it's purely it's, it's purely a, a, an eating thing it's different when lion get into say domestic cattle if lion get out of the reserves and they get into the rural areas where there are cattle the same as leopard when leopard can get into a goat herd or a, or I think even wolves and sheep any predator really they get into domestic stock the fact that domestic stock don't know what a predator is and they just stand around and the predator goes on a killing spree and it just kills because it's, the animals are there not necessarily to eat they'll eat some but they they tend to go into the whole killing mode and they will there are animals there of the hunting predators have to hunt and they have to conserve energy in case they miss they don't are not successful no predator is so successful that they will that they will succeed every time they go hunting and so it's vital that they conserve some some energy from a missed hunt to be able to hunt again and there's no real there's no there's no energy to spend if just for the sake of hunting or just for the sake of the thrill of the hunt. It doesn't really work that way. that again please is that a question oh, okay all right thanks really correctly radio um, dear wants to know if he's heading to the pride in the north no, he's not at the moment dear no he's been in the same place for the last two or three days. At the moment he's not going anywhere. At the moment he's he's sleeping. But no, he's not heading to he might later. We the one of the reasons why we want to come out here and find him every drive is to find out whether he is going to go back or not. What what is going to happen with him, what he's going to decide to do, or what the other lion are going to decide to do. But at the moment he's not heading back to the Pride in the North, no. He's staying here for some for 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 some reason. Uh, only the lion know why he is still here and the rest of the pride is up in the north. We can, maybe it's, I'm thinking, maybe it's because it's time for him to leave the pride. But we are, only, only time is going to be able to tell with this, with this lion what is going to happen. And if he goes out of signal range, all we can do is listen to the radio and get updates from the other guys to see what might happen. But for the time being, while he's here, at least we can watch him. But uh, especially a day like today, it's already getting very hot. Quite hot. Hotter than an English summer, and it's nearly midwinter. So I don't think he's going to go anywhere today. I think he's probably going to stay here. But he's got four buffalo here at the, the pan. There are giraffe in the background. There's just been a kudu that walked by. There are no doubt other animals in the vicinity. He might get chased off. He might chase something. Most likely he's going to lie in the shade. But the shade is going to move. And... I think that he'll probably go down to the bottom of this damn wall, below the damn wall, because that's where the best shade is. Or he could maybe move 
dinner. He could move into the shade anywhere in this nearest vicinity, but it's an open book right now, and anything can happen. Shame that buffalo is getting irritated by flies. Where's the egret going? Trying to get lift. Egret decided there's better fishing elsewhere. Egret's gone. Maybe he's finding it too crowded at this dam. Quelia, Quelia must be up north somewhere. <coughs> boys on water bucks. Oh, quail, I think. A quailer, not quailia. Quailer dam. I don't see quailer dam. Oh, there, quailer dam. Oh, that, that big dam you were telling me about. Um, I'm not so happy that that's, no wonder we can't find the elephant. They're so far west. So maybe they'll come back our way. I heard an elephant with Quela Dam. Hello, Steph, Southampton. What happened with Ari Gang? I haven't the faintest idea, Steph. I, I haven't heard any, I don't know. Um, Steph, no, I know. I, since leaving Juma in November of 2011, I haven't heard anything about the the booms. I occasionally had an update from people when they've been on the camera and they tell me that they've seen Karula or something. But other than that, I haven't the faintest idea of what's going on or what's going on there. I think you'd have to ask the zoomies who are on the Duma waterhole cam whether they still see the baboons at the dam, whether they the baboons still climb all over the cameras. Uh, personally, I don't know. I don't, I don't have access to to watch that camera. I don't have access to the internet when I'm at home, so I don't don't get on to to view the cams. And sadly, when I do go to town and I'm on the internet, I've got a very short period of time in which to do a few emails and a few things. So I have lost contact with everything. That's pretty much everything that's at Juma. I do bump into owners of Juma from time to time in town. I guess I could ask them next time I'm there if I bump into them. But I'd say the best people to ask would be the Pondies or not the Pondies, the Zoomies. People who operate the camera at the dam. So the Juma junkies. Morning, Ed, from you. Speaking of zoomies, Ed was a zoomie for a long time. 
Um, I think he's referring to yesterday when we were so close to when we were sitting next to him and he was roaring. Ed wants to know if we felt if I felt safe. I did. Uh, I haven't really felt threatened by him at all. I mean, we drove had to drive relatively close to him now, and he allowed us to just sneak past him. And you can see where he's sitting and, we, and where the road is in relationship to him. To get to the side of him, instead of going all the way around the dam, I actually just yeah, slowly drove past him. And he looked up at us, made eye contact, he was looking at Becky. The heart beats a little bit faster, and it's quite an adrenaline rush getting that close to a male lion. It's different to a horse if he were to come close to us. But not whether he would jump up and run away, or whether he would snarl at us or snap at us. But as he was roaring yesterday, and the, and the fact that he, the fact that he managed to portray or display, or he wasn't displaying any aggressive behaviour whatsoever. He was mostly uninterested in us. He was more intent on doing his own thing. So, no, I didn't really feel threatened at all. Buffalo puts his nose right in to get the flies away. Okay, I think it's time to start making our way back south. We might bump into some elephants. If we're lucky. <coughs> it does mean I want to sneak past him again because I'd like to take the spin here. Leaving the locker, this my darling Gala, Pan, uh, lying on the dam wall for Nyari in the Maki, and uh, open lock. Uh, which uh, which road you taking up? And you'll have to go with it again, the other radio over overwhelmed you.
Hello, Brian. Saying that looks like something was in the water underneath the buffalo. Yeah, probably terrapins, Brian. Terrapins, where, especially when buffalo are lying in the water, you'll find terrapins feeding on ticks. Basically doing uh, the job of the oxpeckers, but doing it either on the surface of the water or underwater. But terrapins are opportunity in that regard in that there are large mammals in the water they will go to those large mammals and pick off ticks and uh, other things that they can find on the buffalo okay under some gorgeous focal side of the dam.
protection. the hot day in the sun. In fact, there was a hippo visiting Bhutan as well. At some point, last time. Hippo's been doing the rounds. It might not be. Good night, sleep well. Enjoy your weekend. Good day, those of you on our side of the our time. Have a lovely Saturday. Have a lovely and cool, three o'clock Central African time. Becky at the back, FC. Bye for now.